What's going on, everybody? It's your boy, Batman, and I'm coming at you with an in-depth analysis of Hunt the Truth, episode three. Actually, it's episode two because the first episode was called Zero. If that makes sense, this is the third audio file, but it's episode two. So Benjamin Drode, our our little reporter guy, who's been doing all this stuff. Um, he starts out talking to Mike Sullivan, who, if you remember from Forward Unto Dawn, is the guy that was doing all the little hacking into the Oni database to piece together uh, um, videos of the uh, Spartans fighting the Covenant and stuff. Um, if you remember him from Forward Unto Dawn, he's talking to him. He's actually commander with Oni now and uh, talking to him about Chief and how Chief's records don't really match up because Chief's planet was glassed. And it's really hard to find records for a planet that was glassed. Um, and Chief was believed to be the Master Chief, but it turns out Mr. Drode is getting a kind of a um, conflicting opinion from a girl named Katrina, who John used to... Uh, she's from the Starry Night trailers in Halo 3, where the, the two kids were looking up at the stars in the quote-unquote green space is what they called it. Uh, that's what Katrina called it. And she told Mr. Benjamin Gerard that John died at the age of six. She witnessed it. And that his parents were uh, still alive in the year 2528, which is actually four years after his parents were presumed dead. And Benjamin Gerard does not know that Chief was pronounced dead. Um, so he's trying to go back and look through the files and, and get anything he can on this whole this whole dead story because we all know John is alive now if you don't know chief has a clone which of course is the thing that died at age six they clone chief uh, John they clone John because obviously they didn't want parents knowing that their real son is missing blah 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 and you know it, it would get out the word would get out so really interesting stuff because that's not common knowledge to normal people or reporters like Benjamin so um, it's really cool to see that, but I'll get right into, he has a, another interview with a chick named Gabriella Dvorak, who is uh, another Oni person. She used to be a lieutenant in the UNSC, and uh, she has some pretty interesting facts from John's childhood. These last two episodes have been about John's childhood, which I think is really, really cool. So Gabriella goes on to recount the time uh, in Elysium City John was captured uh, and they, uh, her and the UNSC had freed him and a bunch of other people from uh, rebel labor camps in Elysium City. And she noticed how everybody was looking really sickly and limping around and they looked broken almost. Uh, like Batman in Dark Knight Rides. Like, oh yes! I was wondering what it would break first. They were all broken, alright? So, John here stuck out like a sore thumb to her and she was like, wow, this kid... I mean, yeah, he looks dehydrated. Yeah, he looks fucking depressed. But, you know, he's he looks strong at the same time. She said she, he made eye contact with her, and that was a huge thing for her. Like, he, he looked strong. He, he, like, rose above everybody else. She could tell this kid was, this kid. there's something special about this kid. And uh, he was 13 at the time. So John was helping her with her duties, and he actually opened up to her about his parents dying. Um... And feeling the weight of all that, what has happened to him so early at such a young age. And she said how she noticed that on him. And she could tell when he did open up that it took an effect on him. Which is really interesting because we started to see that in Halo. We really haven't seen that in the games. All the stuff that Chief has dealt with. Because he's dealt with a lot in the books and stuff. And in Halo 4, we finally got to see that when Cortana died. That, that weight that you could tell was on Chief. And I thought that was really interesting to draw that parallel between... Um, the weight here and then you know the weight back when he was uh, when he was young uh, now she said that you know he told uh, John told her I want to join the the force one day join the force uh, yeah click that subscribe button but he wanted to join the UNSC not a Triforce gaming network um, and obviously he wanted to get revenge for his parents which was pretty cool um, because he had something to fight for you know so that Baza wraps it up for the interview with Gabriella. There was just some cool little, um, you know, things about John as a childhood and what she noticed about. Him. 
And then one last thing I want to point out. Um, he interviewed one more person, and it was Dion Governor, which was John's boxing coach. And he had mentioned uh, Dion did that. There was a list they had of the people who died, and John's parents were on that list, and he never saw John on that list. So he was always hopeful that, you know, I know John's still alive, and I know he's not dead. Um, so really Ben is trying to piece together, like he's saying, like, wow, like why would this Katrina chick lie about John being alive or being dead? Um, and these people are telling me that he's alive. You know, he's trying to piece this stuff together, and it kind of just leaves a cliffhanger, like stay tuned next week. So I'll keep doing these for you guys. Uh, huntthetruth.tumblr.com so you could watch or listen to those audio logs if you like this video leave a like comment subscribe and uh join the force baby we love you till next time pat man out pikey 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 pikey